Hello everyone, my name is Tim. My name is Alex. And we're here to talk about... Super heat. And subcooling. So, but the first thing we have to talk about is... Saturation. Okay? Saturation is that point um, in refrigeration where I have both liquid and gas. We're going to give this example with water, but it's not quite the same. Now, if I have liquid water, is it superheated? No. Is it subcooled? No. No. So, liquid water is neither. If I was to turn it all into ice and then remove temperature from it, then it would be subcooled. If I was to add heat, boil it all off, and when the last beat boiled off, and added more heat, it'd be superheated. Superheated, huh? Now, what's the other end of this? In our example, we are all ice. Now, if I got this all ice, and then removed another degree of temperature from it, it would now be? So cool. Yes. Okay. Now, in between these two, in our example of saturation, is I have about equal amounts of water and equal amounts of ice. It's saturated. If I lower the temperature anymore, it'll all turn to ice. Yeah. And then if I lower it some more, it'll all turn... If I lower it below 32 degrees, it'll be subcooled. Sub -cool. If I raise it above 212 degrees at atmospheric pressure, super it would be super heat. So I boil it all off, add a little more heat to it in the sealed container, and now I have superheated water. Superheated water. Superheated water vapor, right? Yeah. Now, in my, since we're talking about superheat and subcooling, if I leave the compressor, it comes off the compressor as what? Superheated. Superheated gas comes through here. Saturates. Gets saturated. Now I have both gas and liquid. Right. I pass the saturation curve. It all turns into? Subcool. Subcool. So I've saturated, removed some more heat from it, and got it saturated normally about 10 to 20 degrees or so. Come back over through here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm turning it back from a liquid. From, from no longer being stuck cool, turn it back into a saturation. saturation. And then superheated. Superheated to make sure that all that liquid is vapor up, vaporized. So here I pick up heat, here I remove heat. This could be the outdoor coil or the condenser. This is the indoor coil for the evaporator for the heating cycle, or for the cooling cycle. Now I got some gauges here. Yeah. These gauges are meant so that I can get that saturation. I take a very special tool called a temperature pressure chart. Right. Also referred to as the boiling point chart. So, for example, if I had R22 at 102 pounds right. in that condenser or that evaporator, it would be 60 degrees. 60 degrees. 60 degree refrigerant temperature. If I took it at 32.8, it would be saturated temperature of 10. So there's a direct correlation between pressure and temperature. How would I measure that? That pressure. Ooh, I got some gauges. Normally, red means high, blue means cold. Yeah, or low pressure, right? And these are mechanical gauges. Mm -hmm. But we don't live in mechanical times. I want something better. We want digital. So these are better. We got more fittings, more knobs to turn, and they're solar powered. And no batteries. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. So, and also I can do direct conversion using these charts here. Or they're already built in. So when it sees pressure, it'll automatically convert it to what the saturated temperature is. So some of my work is gone. That's, that's pretty handy. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Is that it? I think we can get better. Here we go. These look a little better. Wow, these are cool. Now these two have built in all these functions are digital displays, got some more knobs to turn, but in this essence, internally into this device, it has this pressure temperature chart built in. Now, we've talked about getting saturation. That's our starting point, right? Right. We can't do superheats and subcoolings without first determining saturation. Now, once I've determined saturation, I need another temperature, like the, the leading refrigerant temperature from the condenser or the leading refrigerant temperature from the evaporator. So on this one, I got these little fish type things that are thermal couples that I can attach to the lines. So 
so as it leaves the condenser or evaporator, I will clamp one of these on. Well, what if I don't have one of those? Use well, what if I don't? Can I use one of these? Gosh darn, man, you're bringing me down. So yeah, I could use one of these, right? Is this very practical? Not really. But it would give me a thermometer reading, right? What about one of these? Ooh, this is better. This is better. I can actually clamp some of these things on to the... It has some special probes here I could clamp on to the, the leading evaporator, leading condenser. Well, what about this one? Will Ooh, this that, work too? That'll work too. Uh, so I got little thermal couples that take those on to the leading condenser and the leading evaporator, and I can get that second temperature, because I need that. Because if I look here, through the, it's leading the compressor, entering the condenser, right in here, mm -hmm. and it's now passing the saturation right. curve. So I first do my super, de superheating, right. passes the line here, now I'm saturated. Right. As I move forward, it's getting more and more liquid, more and more liquid, until it passes that saturation line, okay? Then it does, yes! Okay, now it's subpoint. I just lowered the temperature below saturation. Now it's gonna go through the expansion device. All the way down. Yep, now it's in the evaporator, right? Now it's picking up heat. So we look here, heat goes this way, more heat this way, less heat this way, higher pressure this way, lower pressure this way. So it's picking up heat, picking up heat, picking up heat, picking up heat. Now what happens when it gets here? It's super hot. It's super heated. Now once it passes this line, it's now super heated. So this is my saturation curve. Now when I'm actually measuring my super heat, I want to take my gauge, whichever gauge I happen to have, as long as it's accurate, right? I'm going to take and I'm going to take this gauge, catch. Good job. <laughs> and I'm going to physically measure the pressure here and convert it to temperature, in this case for the evaporator or the indoor coil for cooling. And I'm going to physically measure the temperature on that line on top. And I'm going to subtract the two. I'm going to subtract 52 from 40, which gives me 12 degrees. Now, this is an example. This is my, if I had an expansion device, I'm measuring the saturated pressure in here by using my pressure temperature gauges, and I'm measuring the physical temperature here. These can either be capillary tubes or expansion valves, okay? Capillary tubes, normally I'm going to adjust charging by superheat, super and expansion valve type systems, I'm going to charge by subcooling. Sub now, in retrospect, going backwards. Okay, time travel thing again. Um, this happens to be a heat pump, so we have indoor and outdoor coils. So if I leave here, I'm going in to the condenser. I'm desuperating, just like we saw. I pass the saturation curve. I'm both liquid and gas here. I now reach the point where I'm past the saturation curve, and I'm subcooling. Normally about, if I look at here, how many degrees of subcooling do I have? Ten because I take the saturated, which I got from my pressure to temperature, uh -huh. and I got the physical temperature here, and I'm, I'm there. Come down to here, come in the evaporator. Where did I get this? From the, from the gauges, from the gauges. on the PP chart, converting pressure to temperature, okay? Then I physically measure the temperature here, so I take the saturated temperature from the leaving physical temperature, and what's my super heat? 10 degrees. Wow! That's pretty awesome. Now I can use this for multiple functions. Some people have charts. And if it's using these super heat charts, I, I need my super heats, I need my sub coolings, right? Yes! So, are we good? We're good. We're good. So, super heat and sub cooling. There is no mystery that we cannot solve. So come back to us next time and see the ever unfolding history. See the ever unfolding physics of HVAC. Together we will journey beyond your imagination. Super E. Sub going. Tim out. And we're gone.